and that one-on-one -on -one brought to you by Holiday Inn. Our starting lineups brought to you by Kranz, Nerdine Lindsay, Jonathan Thompson, Anthony Miles, Daniel Stewart, and Dira N.D. Azuma, veteran bunch starting for the Bronx. And for Iona, trying to snap that three-game losing streak here on their home floor. They've got Lamont Momo Jones, the third leading scorer in the entire nation, leads the Mac at over 22 per game. Trey Bowman's been playing well lately, Sean Armand, Taj Ridley, and David Lowry. You go to Momo Jones and continue to play through him as much as you can. And then they've got to defend the paint in that loss down in Lawrenceville. Danny Stewart absolutely killed him inside in the second half, allowing the Bronx to pull away with that win at home. Lamont Momo Jones, the Arizona transfer, with the basketball to begin our ball game. And he fires away from just inside the three-point line. I think they're going to go to him early and often, try to ride their stalk. Well, Virginia Tech's Eric Green continues to set the pace in scoring in the country at over 25 per game. Momo is about three points per game back, but uh, coming off a 37-point performance. And we talk about Iona's three-game losing streak. They lost those games, Rob, as Stewart misfires by three in overtime at Niagara, by three at Canisius, and by one in double overtime here against Marist in what was an unbelievable game. So it's not like the wheels have fallen off. They have just had some bad luck and not made free throws late, not made plays they needed to make. They didn't finish out either of those two games, and that was the key. Jones uses the screen from Armand. The league's most accurate three-point shooter has struggled lately and missed his first attempt badly. Taj Ridley with a huge size advantage down on the post. And an offensive foul going against Armand. Now Ridley has been in the starting lineup the last few games. Back in the lineup, I should say. He was suspended for a short while. and Trying to get him back out there and playing in conjunction with David Lowry and see if that can help out inside. Well, it gives him much better size. One of the problems Iona has had as of late, they haven't forced turnovers. You know, this is a team that forced a lot of turnovers. They haven't been able to do it lately. Dira Endi Azuma goes over the back of Lowry for the rebound. And Lowry's a terrific rebounder. And it's the first two for the Bronx. And he's been on quite a roll rebounding. Double figures each of the last seven games. Well, as we talked about, Iona does love to get up and down. They're able to put the ball in the basket third in the country at over 82 points per game. And Momo and Armand are the two in the backcourt to lead the way. Yeah, and you would have thought with the graduation of Scott Machado and Mike Glover inside that maybe those scoring numbers would come down. That's not been the case. But that tells you, Doug, is it's more than just the players. It's about the system that Tim Kloos has employed here, and it has worked extremely well. As you mentioned, 50 wins in his first two seasons. And once again, has the Gales in the hunt for another potential MAC regular season championship. But, Rob, with that, Iona has shown during the Tim Kloos era... The ability to build big leads and score a lot of points, but also to give up leads in a hurry and give up huge leads. And that's the crazy thing, especially this year. They're such a good foul shooting team. You'd think that they'd win those close games coming down the stretch, but they've given a couple of them away because they haven't closed out. Nerdy and Lindsay called for traveling. And it's been their best free throw shooters who have been the biggest culprits yeah. in Armand and Jones lately from the line. All very correctable errors that you would think at 8-5 and five and still very much in the mix, along with Ryder. Two games back of Niagara in the hunt for the MAC regular season championship, but uh, they are still as dangerous as anybody. Lowry was blocked by Endi Azuma. Ryder comes in 13 and 12 overall. They beat Niagara on Thursday, the last time out. 72 69 down in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. And even though Niagara was without Antoine Mason, that's a good, solid win at home. Indeed it is. Niagara having dropped a couple of games lately. Coming back to the pack a bit. Taj Ridley had it blocked. A great defense, a hustle to get back and challenge what would have been an easy fast break basket. Anthony Miles for three. As we said, coming off that career tying 23 points against Niagara. He got himself in a confident shooting groove. Trey Bowman, the Penn State transfer. Here's Jones. A little strong with it. Ball still loose. Armand had it for a moment. 
But it's Nuruddin Lindsay. Chance for three, foul against Jones. And that's a good sign for the Ryder Bronx because they really haven't gotten anything out of Nuri Lindsay lately. They're struggling to score the basketball, really struggling to shoot the ball. But this time comes up with a loose ball on the floor and then aggressively attacks the basket. And that's one of the things that Kevin Baggett has been hoping for. Since I've been coaching him and trying to give him as much confidence, now it's up to Nuri to go take advantage of the scoring opportunities that he's got. First three of the night for Lindsay. He averages only 8.7 per game. He's got the ability to put up big points, you know. After transferring from St. John's, two of his first four games for Ryder, he scored 26. But as you say, Rob, lately it has been a struggle. Yeah, he was the player of the week in the back his very first week. But since then, he has struggled. Stewart and Andy Azuma are defending the basket brilliantly, but we finally do have a foul call on the Ridley putback. So the young man who returned to the starting lineup last week against Canisius will head to the line to shoot two. And in that game where Ridley returned to the starting lineup, he scored 18 points at Canisius. That was last Saturday, and he's a guy who brings a lot of intangibles to the table for Iona that they aren't getting from other people. Yeah, and you talked about that game against Canisius, then he backed it up with a double-double last time out against Marison. Interestingly enough, in those two games since he got back into the starting lineup, 25 field goal attempts. This is from a guy who, you know, wasn't looking for shots. You know, might put up four shots a game prior to that, but all of a sudden he's now trying to find some offense himself. I'll never forget his first game ever as an Iona Gale. It was at the Puerto Rico tip-off last year against a very good Purdue team. And he went for 16 and 12. So he's got it in him. If he, if he can do that against a real good Big Ten team, he certainly can produce yeah. in the match. And last year he didn't have to score. At times, especially early in this year, he deferred. But the last couple of games, you get 25 shots in a two-game stretch. You know, you're, you're playing with some confidence and you're looking to score the basketball. Jones leaves the defender on the floor and puts it in. And he'll do that. He'll break ankles, score the basketball in the lane. His three-point shot's been a little off the last couple of games, so he'll go score it in the paint. And he joined the 1,000-point club at Niagara on January 31st. And that's 1,000 points in just his two years at Iona. That's not even counting his couple of years at Arizona. First media timeout of the night. We'll step away from the Heinz Athletic. snow. Rob, you came up from Jersey. You guys had, what, about a half foot of yeah, snow? Yeah, we got about a half foot, but uh, I tell you what, there was nothing on the roads driving nope. up. No. Nope. No snow, no cars. It was as easy a commute up here as I think I've ever had. And the Iona campus had maybe eight or nine inches, but just to the east of us in Connecticut and all throughout New England, they got absolutely hammered. Armand with the lefty putback, and maybe that will get him going. Armand can be a prolific scorer, and his calling card is that tremendous three-point shot, and they need him to be productive along with Momo Jones. Zedrick Sadler with the basketball just off the rider bench. His pass taken away, and here comes Bowman. Jones up ahead, didn't have an angle to get it to him, though. And Daniel Stewart, again, coming from behind, play some terrific defense and tie him up. And Bowman just got himself in a tough spot. He cannot get over-penetrated. So that's an arm on struggling from the outside. You're right, maybe this will get him going. Good hustle to come up with the loose ball off the backboard. Now he's third in the conference in scoring at just a touch under 18 points per game. He shoots his threes on the year at 43%. And he gets his first two here tonight to put the Gales on top with a layup. Stewart. Kicks to the corner. Thompson connects. Oh, that's a nice play inside out. Great hands by Danny Stewart. Come up with the catch. Got himself into the lane. Here comes a double. And spotting up out on the three is Thompson. Yeah, senior captain from Orlando with his first three. Giving Ryder the lead. 
And Armand takes it right back. Well, you're right. Maybe it did get him going. And that's the first three of the ball game for the Gales. Again, they knocked down 9.4 per game. Top five in the country. Just over six minutes in. Iona on top by two. Ryder with the basketball. Miles. Good closeout that time by Ridley to get a hand up in his face. Jones off the window and a chance for three. Well, back to back plays. You can see why the Gales are so good in the backcourt. The three initially from Armand and then again finding the spot. Good crossover and look at the upper body strength on the finish by Momo Jones. Again, struggling for three as of late. Doesn't matter. He's a scorer, not just a shooter. Able to manufacture points. And Azuma out of the ball game. Tommy Pereira has come in. Also given assist on that last play. Tavon Sledge, the uh, former Iowa State Cyclone, just into the game. And when he's out there, then it allows Momo to freelance a little yep. bit more out on the wing. And when he's got the ball in his hands, he's thinking about one thing. Advancing the ball quickly up the floor to try and get in transition. Ridley comes down with the Thompson miss. A rider settling for too many threes against the Iona zone. Lowry sets the screen. And Stewart almost left Momo Jones. You can't can't leave him. If you switch, you got to step. Lowry, size advantage inside. And again, the help side defender Stewart comes over to make it tough on the double-double. the fact they take a ton of threes you see the overall field goal percentage at 45 percent so efficient and effective scores not just guys that score because of volume shot attempts and they feed off of each yeah, other. yeah they play great off each other and play to each other's strengths Khalil Alford has come into the game for Ryder as well everything perimeter oriented against this zone Junior Fortunat gets bottled up on the low post and he traveled Diggs Moikobu and Sean Armand had him bottled up pretty good. And so a 6-0 Iona run over the last minute and a half can be extended. And that was one of the things that Tim Kloos and his staff talked about before the game, trying to get back to forcing more of those turnovers. He's picking it up, and that prompts a timeout from the rider bench. Kevin Baggett wants to talk it over as the Gales have rattled off the last eight points. And they've done it. The even balanced league, it is really balanced this year. And I'm not just saying that. It is no. unbelievable that we're four weeks out and have no idea who the favorite is. No, you've got five teams that are bunched up at the top of the standings within two games of each other. And still a number of battles against each other. A lot to be decided. And again, up there now, a little different because it is a completely neutral court. And because of that, it makes it a little bit more wide open. Pereira misses. Sadler had the ball go through his hands and out of bounds. Time out on the floor with the Gales in the midst of an 8-0 run. Iona up by 7. Canisius and... You know, it's interesting. Now that George Beeman's out for the rest of the season, looks like Stevie Masiello's team, they've figured out a different way to play offensively, taking time off the clock, running through things, and defensively, that matchup of Fairfield-Manhattan, those are the two best defensive teams in the Look like the favorite maybe again. But last week it was somebody else. It was that. Yeah. It looks like every week we've got a new favorite, and that's what's going to make the tournament so interesting in a couple of weeks up in Springfield. And the fact of the matter is Niagara still continues to set the pace oh, yeah. and they have a tremendous ability to put up points especially from the backcourt. And they don't get faced. They get themselves in a hole. They're not worrying about it. Nope. They've pulled some uh, rabbits out of a hat as far as coming up with a couple of wins including that crazy one up in western New York last week against these Iona Gales. And if Jones and Armand are 1 and 1A one in terms of scoring combos not only in the country but in this league. Niagara certainly has its own scoring ability in the backcourt too. 
Khalil Alford with his first two points, and that snaps the 8-0 run. And they need something like that. They were too perimeter-oriented. They've already taken eight threes. That's the first time they've gotten the ball to the high post against the zone. Armand steps back. Tried to bank in the two. Fortunat's going to be called for the over-the-back foul. As Moikobu had good position, giving up three or four inches, but he had his spot on the floor. Mac News and Notes. Adam Kemp became the first player in the country since 2007 to have a stat line like that in uh, their stunning double overtime win at, uh, right here at Iona. The last guy to do it five years ago was Jason Thompson, then of Ryder, to be able to put up a stat line like that. And, and Kemp is just so big and strong. Yep. And we've seen in flashes over the years, he can do certain things, but he's never really put it together like that. But what he can't do is he can't score over guys. So when you see him put up that those point totals, you know that he had a lot of runs right to the front of the rim. And that's what bothers the Gales sometimes, those defense elapses. But last year here in this building, he had a great game against the Gales. Every once in a while, matchup works for a particular player. Looks like Kemp. It works against the Gale. Yeah, I'd say it worked. Ten points now for Momo Jones. Lead back to seven. Miles. Way off the mark. Fortunate. Can't save it. And the Gales get it back. And again, everything just passing the ball along the perimeter and throwing up a guarded contested three. You've got to probe the zone defense. Get the ball into the high post like they did when Alfred was able to knock down the mid-range shot or pound the basketball inside. You can't be a donut offense against the zone. Thompson replaces Miles. Sledge to the rim. Fortunate. Called for the personal. Well, you said it earlier. Sledge goes one way. Hard and fast right to the bucket. Yep, he goes 100 miles an hour. He, he's, you know, he's like a fastball pitcher coming out of the bullpen. He's just, you know it's coming, but he's so quick. Sometimes you can't sit on that fastball. Sledge 5'9", 175. A sophomore from Spring Valley, New York. Out of half Hollow Hills. West High School, as I mentioned, he started his college career at Iowa State. Wound up getting an immediate hardship waiver in late October, so he'd be eligible to play immediately here. And yeah, much like Momo Jones was able to do the year before, and the NCAA, not have to sit that year. Yeah, they are much more understanding, yep. I guess, if that's the, the the right word. Where it used to take a lot of doing to get that, now it's a lot easier. Daniel Stewart with a chance for three. And that is a big-time catch. He's got great hands. He was able to snatch this high pass right out. Able to gather. Good ball fake to get the defender in the air. And then he's got the strength to finish through the contact. Those are some strong hands. When he's around the basketball, that's why he comes up with it. And the 6'7 junior from Philadelphia with his first points of the night. He completes the three-point play. Averaging over 11 per game. They need more out of him. He can't just not get any points from him for the first 10 minutes of the game. Trey Bowman brings it back to Momo Jones. Hangs, goes to the left hand. Oh. And it's going to go against Stewart. Wow. Momo Jones completely out of control off his feet and gets absolutely bailed out by the whistle. See right there. Danny Stewart's there, even though it's not chest-to-chest. Chest, Jones is out of control. As an official, send it the other way. Don't, don't reward bad play. Instead, it's the seventh team foul against Ryder. First against Stewart. And Jones, a uh, proficient foul shooter, 88%, makes the first. He's already got 12 points, as you see, for the ball game. Alford gets it to Pereira. You see the energy from the Gales out of their zone defense. Sadler, a little leaner. He's got it from about eight feet away. Yeah, he's had a real solid freshman year. First two points for the young man from Detroit. Didn't get enough minutes or shot attempts to maybe make an all-rookie team, but he's one of the better freshmen in this league. Air ball from Jones, but again, the energy from two of his teammates, McCoy Boo and Bowman, trying to yep. get the ball from going out of bounds. Um, again, you wonder how they were going to react after that crazy finish. You know, anybody throws a 65-footer and knocks it in to force overtime, it could be real deflating. Well, the Gales have had energy tonight. Here comes Lowry, a point forward. He's got the ability at his size to put the ball to the deck. Now he's trying to post up Stewart. He slips the screen. Lowry drawing the attention. Moikobu makes him pay. Yeah, good finish. And Moikobu doesn't get a whole lot of minutes. Averages under two points per game coming in. But again, he's giving him energy. 
Ferreira coming off a brutal night his last time out where he went 0 for 5 from the floor. And, of course, for him, those were all three-point shots. Misses his first attempt tonight. That time, Moikobu couldn't gather. He lost it out of bounds, and it's Ryder basketball. When we come back, Iona 25, Ryder. in this game between a couple of eight and five clubs in the back. They're all chasing Niagara with a month remaining or so in the regular season. Thompson and Miles back together in the backcourt for Ryder. Sean Valentine has come in for the Bronx along with Stewart. And Sadler. Stewart is fouled by David Lowry. And I like the action there. A little high, low to pound the basketball inside. Just their eighth field goal attempt inside the three-point line. Two of ten from deep against the zone. And don't force it. If it's not there, Kevin Baggett's team has to figure out a way to get the ball to the high post and put some pressure on that zone. Stewart's good foul shooter. 77% on the year. He was the rookie of the year in the conference two years ago. And he is a really important part of this team if they have postseason aspirations. And he's become a more complete player. And his scoring numbers don't necessarily reflect it, but he's a much better offensive player than he's been because he can step away from the basket as well. They may even think about putting him up at the high post and figure out if they can throw somebody else in the low post. But the foul trouble for Fortunat, they may have to wait to the second half to be able to get that alignment. Now Andy Azuma got the start tonight and uh, gave him a few good minutes early. Sledge. Uses his body to get to the bucket, but then the block shot. Nice job by Sadler. Valentine steps back. Misses the shot. Long rebound. Still loose. Who's going to get it? It's Bowman. And how about the hustle by Ridley to keep that basketball alive? He laid his body out like a shortstop in the hole. Jones block, and the Bronx defensively just continue to pile up the block shots. Rebounding foul. Well, Taj Ridley gave up his body here, you know. He's no more for rebounding the basketball at the rim, but how about that effort play by Ridley to keep it alive? But you're right, Doug, the Bronx defense, especially their interior defense, has really been good, and that's the biggest change of this team under first year head coach Kevin Baggett. Their defense at numbers so much better than they've been yep. the last couple of years. And it's good to see uh, Ridley backing up his words, you know, after the, uh, the brutal loss the other night in the locker room. He let his teammates have it. And it was an open discussion where everybody was saying what was on their mind, but Ridley in particular said, you guys got to do more. We've got to do more. We've got to work harder and make sure we close out these games. And, and Ridley certainly so far tonight has shown that energy on top of the production you expect to get from it. You know, this is a program that has only four players back from last year's terrific team. He's one of them. And really, if, if you don't count Moikobu, who doesn't play a lot of minutes, you really have three key players back. And so it's Ridley's turn as only a second-year player in the program to provide a leadership role. And again, you got to have the short memory. That's one great thing about basketball. You don't have to wait a week in between games. Miles, again, short on the three. And here comes Jones. Bad pass, out of bounds. Left it behind Sledge. Ridley and Jones, a little different idea about how that play went. Carrying over that locker room conversation you were talking about. Yeah. There's a good action against the zone. Followed by a poor action after they got yeah. cut off along the baseline. Yeah, Valentine wasn't strong enough with the basketball in the post. That's not usually a problem for this man, Lowry. Although a lot of what he does is falling away from the bucket. But he has had a tremendous start statistically to his Iona career, averaging a double-double. And even though uh, I think statistically he won't be able to qualify for the overall rebounding championship, he could give uh, Odie Anasiki of Siena a run for his money. Well, especially the run that he's been on as of late, averaging over 11 rebounds on the season. 
Another three. This time, Miles finds the range. Second three-point bucket made, and it's back to a three-point game. But two of their three threes they've made have come inside out. It's so much easier when that pass is coming from the post where you're stepping right into it as opposed to just coming around the horn on the perimeter. You duck it in here. Now, all of a sudden, that closeout takes a lot longer to get there, and it's as if it's a shooting drill. You know, you got somebody rebounding the basketball for you. That's the easiest three to knock down, one that you're stepping right into. Jones back at the line. He has been there a lot already tonight. Perfect five for five. Well, he's made more foul shots than any other player in the country. 151 coming in. He gets himself to the line, that's for sure. High school juniors check out all 10 MAC schools at the 2013 MAC College Fair. It'll be Monday, March 11th at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. Join us at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. For more information, log on to Massachusetts.com. Off the missed free throw, Iona gets to inbound it off the baseline as Ryder was the last to touch. The Gales have not scored a field goal for over four minutes, Rob. Yet still leading by three. This is the pace, though, that Ryder wants. They don't want to get themselves in a up-and-down pace against Iona. Well, Armand has nine points and only one made three-pointer. He's got three layups as he closes in on 1,000 points for his career. He's now 14 shy of reaching 1,000 as only a junior. And he certainly worked hard in the offseason to expand his game and not just be a three-point shooter. Miles, nice fake, and then the rainbow runner is way off the mark. Bowman got lucky on that save that his teammates were able to come up with his pass. Here comes Lowry, and Azuma tries to cut him off. Bowman from 21. Now, smart play by Ridley. He's wide open, but gave up the three to go find a much better shot from Bowman. Bowman in the top five in the conference at 40% beyond the arc. First points of the night, though. He's been in double figures four of Iona's last five games. Good ball movement to find Stewart, open from 16. And that's what we were talking about. He can knock down that 15-foot shot, so if they can get somebody else in the post, he can get some work done in the high post. Gales with the basketball, up by six. Armand again, working his way into the paint. And drawing the foul against Andy Azuma. And Andy Azuma was in good defensive position if he didn't reach over and slap down. Official timeout here in New Rochelle. 6 5 junior Trey Bowman out. Tim Plus, who still makes his home on Long Island, certainly is well aware of that rivalry, having gone through it now five times as head coach of the Gales. Talking to Tim before the ball game, uh, of course, parts of Long Island got just hammered with oh, yeah. I saw some of the shots of the Long Island Expressway that was just unbelievable with the cars just abandoned. And uh, But Coach Plus said that his drive-in wasn't so, so bad. Oh, my! How about the slam? John Thompson. Well, to me, John Thompson is the most underrated player in the back. And he's a guy at 6'4", the point guard. He's so much bigger and longer than you realize. And he caught them completely off guard on this one. This is a no-brainer Pepsi Max slam of the game. He took off like a uh, Michael Jordan way away from the basket. Held it up a little bit like James Worthy with the one hand, and then boom. If we get a better dunk than that, we'll have two slams of the game. You and I can both have a Pepsi Max yeah. for that. That's nice. That's an easy one. Why wait yep. till later in the game? I don't think you're going to get much better than that. Goes Ryder back within five. Jones again getting the foul call against Sadler. What is it? Some guys like Momo Jones just have the ability to draw fouls. Oh, yeah. Well, ball fake there to get the defender in the air, but he uses his upper body. He's always leaning in. 
And then he's got the upper body strength to bounce off of that contact. We said 151 made foul shots heading into this ball game. He's already got five here again tonight. No yep. player in the country scores more from the foul line than Momo Jones. And with that, he is a prolific scorer. Third in the country at over 22 per game. Back in high school, he played a couple of years of varsity ball at Rice and then played his junior year at American Christian in Pennsylvania and then wound up at uh, the famed Oak Hill Academy before heading west to uh, Arizona where he played for the Wildcats for a couple of years. And then he also got a hardship waiver from the NCAA, so he was immediately eligible last year because his grandmother, who's so close to, Marilyn Opperman, was not in good health in New York City, but we're glad to report that Marilyn is doing well and living so close to New York City. Momo's able to go see his grandmother all the time. The Gales right now, they've got this seven-point lead on the strength of an eight-point advantage from the foul line. So the Gales have been aggressive attacking the rim. Ryder settling for too many threes. And that's all Momo Jones. He's seven of eight from the line for his 15 points. First personal on Taj Ridley in the eighth against Iona as a team here in the first half. And so Alford at the free throw line. The freshman from Raleigh has not been to the line much this year. In fact, he's only two for two, now make it three for three. Yeah, and getting some minutes here today. Comes in averaging under two points per game. And so knocked down a jumper at the high post and uh, made the most of the extra minutes that he's gotten here today. Now Nuri Lindsay on the bench with a couple of personal fouls early. And that in part allows Alford to have four points here in the first half. Came in averaging only the one and a half per. Jones nearly lost his footing and gave it away. But Jones puts such pressure on the guy guarding him with the basketball in his hand. Tend to shoot. Armand loses his footing. Does a little Marcus Haynes with the dribble. There's Stewart on the floor for it. Here come the Bronx. Thompson tries a double Euro step. Something very awkward, and he's called for traveling. Bad spacing on that break. Ryder had three guys, and two of them were standing right next to each other. Yeah, both guys fanned out to the three-point line. One guy's got to dive. The one thing that the three-point line has done, you know, he used to run three on two, two on one fast breaks all the time, and guys would just fill and dive to the basket. Now everybody wants to fan out to the three. <laughs> you can't have two guys fan out to the same spot. Well, that was uh, that was ugly. Armand, tough shot. Taking a couple of threes tonight. Miles making that one tough. He's missed them both badly. Yeah, and one thing, remember, with the length of both Thompson and Miles in the backboard, it's one of the reasons why they defend the three so well. We said top 25 in the country. Only opposition to under 29% on the season from beyond the three-point line. And that's the best mark in the match. Armand, one of three tonight from beyond the arc. The one that was open, he knocked down. The other two have been contested, and he missed them badly. Yeah, that's the way it happens. Sometimes you got to pick and choose. You can't force threes. you got to wait for a couple of good, clean looks from beyond the three. No look pass to Alfer. And again, right place, right time. Terrific feed to find him. Career high six points to pull Ryder within three. Armand again taking it strong to the bucket. And putting the pressure on the Bronx defense. We've got a blocking foul. Armand getting two free throws. Riders at 10 team fouls. So Iona in the double bonus. And Armand, who has uncharacteristically struggled at the free throw line lately, looks good on his first. And the second, a junior from Brooklyn, now with 13 points. 45 seconds to go first half. Ridley and Sledge with the trap, and they force the turnover. And that's at least the third or fourth of the Ryder turnovers that have been forced with that three-quarter court trapping defense. Got about five seconds difference between the game and shot clocks. The Gales have gone on another extended stretch without a field goal. Now three minutes, Rob, but they've been able to get to the free throw line a lot and maintain the lead. Jones, a terrific looking shot. And again, the lead in that gets a defender off of him. 
but he's got the balance to be able to elevate and go score it in the lane. 17 now for Momo Jones, the lead back to seven. Ryder's last lead was 11-10, about 14 minutes ago. Now just three seconds to work with. Stewart going to have to do something. The official Bob Adams says the shot was too late, came after the horn, and so a bad fight. getting to the free throw line. Yep, and they've got an eight point advantage from the foul line, one of the reasons why they have a seven point lead. And then rebounding, we said that was gonna be a big stat. Remember, uh, Ryder comes in 11 and one when they out rebound their opponent. The Gales had the better of it in the first half, seven rebound advantage. That flips it from the first time these two teams met when Ryder out rebounded Iona by 14 on the boards, one of the reasons why they got the win at home. Thompson and Miles in the backcourt with Nordine Lindsay, who didn't play much in that first half because of two fouls. Stewart and Endy Azuma rounding out the starting five for the Bronx in their road Cranberry uniforms. Ryder University from just outside of Trenton, New Jersey, down in Central Jersey in Lawrenceville. Had no problem making the trip up for the ball game in spite of the bad weather in the Northeast the last couple of days. Endy Azuma with the putback. I've got a feeling that uh, growing up in Nigeria, he never saw three feet of snow. <laughs> Certainly didn't have to deal with that. And giving him some offense, known more for his defense. And certainly he's done that. He's challenged. They had seven block shots in that first half, did Ryder. But he's been able to get a couple of field goals as well. Here's Lowry with his first two points. He had a furious first half. Yeah, and he didn't get a whole lot of touch. A couple of those block shots, and all of a sudden he shied away, faded away a couple of times and his teammates went away from him. Miles, nothing but net. Well, they continue to fire away from beyond the three-point line. Now four of 13, all against that zone from Iona. Now let's take a look at our statistics from the first half and uh, the rebounding, a big part of what's going on. Ryder with only the one offensive rebound. And six for the Gales, good energy. That was the biggest thing, the biggest stat in that first half for me were all the energy stats and great energy and enthusiasm from the Gales. Good bounce back from that heartbreaker Thursday night. Our stats brought to you by New York Life. Nuri Lindsay. And Perfect switch. The Ryder Bronx team knocking down threes. They're right back in the ball game. Down by one. And alert the media. That's his first three, Doug, since no, or excuse me, December 7th. Wow. I mean, he has not been able to buy a field goal. He was 0 for his last 20 from beyond the three-point line. So you're saying he might be able to move A-Rod off the back page? <laughs> Here you go. He does get a wide open look because in his scouting report, it says don't go guard it. Why not? You're 0 for 20 coming in from beyond the three. You'll live with that if you're Iona, but it worked out for Ryder. So six points now for the junior out of West Philadelphia, PA, who played his freshman season, or at least part of a freshman season, at St. John's University. Lowry got away with a push off by the all farm to save that basketball. Jones probing the defense, being guarded by Thompson along the baseline. Again, Sledge, instead of spotting up from three, he's moving. We saw earlier when Momo Jones had a turnover because of that earlier. How about the powerful move along the baseline and Ridley trying to pump up his teammates and the crowd. They saw great energy from him in the first half, continuing here in the second half. First made field goal, though, for the senior out of the Bronx, Thompson. Boy, the Bronx are getting a lot of perimeter shooting from various people, and we're tied at 42. Timeout call. Let's take a look at our Holiday Inn one-on-one -on -one update. Coach Kennedy? Oh, certainly. The backcourts both have been active, but uh, Momo Jones with those 17 first-half points getting himself 
to the foul line. Seven out of eight from the line. On the other side, Anthony Miles off to a decent start as well, including knocking down three of seven for beyond the arc. Thompson, Miles, and Lindsay have each hit three-pointers here in the early going to uh, get rid of what was a seven-point Iona lead at the intermission. Tavon Sledge with a basketball, giving it off to Lamont Momo-Jones. Lowry, triple teamed at another Bronx block shot. And then a travel call in the backcourt as the Bronx were trying to get out on the break. Yep, and good call as Lindsay traveled before he was able to get rid of that basketball. Well, that was a team block. I'm not sure who you credit that one to. Looked like a couple of guys got a piece of it. But Andy Azuma and Stewart all night long have been yeah. up there and blocking shots and making life difficult inside for Iona. Especially for David Lowry. And he has not had a uh, terrific offensive performance so far. Nine block shots as you see. So the Gales move it out a little bit yeah. and let the league's best three-point shooter knock it down, Sean Armand. And he could do that. He doesn't have to toe the line from three. He's got deep, deep range. Well, he seriously says he's comfortable from that Pepsi Max sticker right there. Yeah. He, he can easily shoot, and I don't think Tim Kloos would bat an eyelash any time he fired from that point. Thompson gives it back to Stewart. He was towing the three-point line. That's a two-point shot. And the Bronx continue to stay hot here in the second half. And that's a shot he was unable to make a couple of years ago. Eight points for Daniel Stewart. Lowry to the cutting sledge. And he will shoot a pair of free throws. That's the one thing. If you take Lowry away, you still have to keep the presence of mind because he's a terrific passer. Williams uh, took that upon himself to really make the Jimmy Fun go, and now the Mac involved as we are in year two of a three-year contract with the tournament being held in Massachusetts in Springfield. Sledge gets the first. I oh, saw Iona come out here tonight, Rob, with so much energy in the first half. We haven't seen them replicate that so far here in the second half, especially defensively, and they've been laid on closeouts out to Ryder. But certainly the Gales struggled knocking down threes in the first half. A lot of that had to do with Iona's defense. They were coming out, hand up, good closeouts. Hasn't been the same closeouts here in the second. A couple of free throws by Sledge, who's barely over 50% on the year. Puts the lead back up to three. 15 to shoot for the Bronx. Thompson and Miles in the backcourt. Here's Danny Stewart at the high post. Thompson, little runner, and it rattles home, although Fortunat seemed to touch the rim while the ball was on the cylinder. Uh, more than seemed to, he did. That should have been basket interference. Tim Clues trying to figure out why it wasn't. Under 10 to shoot for the Gales. You see, Ryder has been as good as you can get at the offensive end. So far here in the second half, a perfect six for six. And good no call there because Fortunat did exactly what you're supposed to do as a defender. He held his ground, arms straight up, even though Momo Jones is leaning in for the contact. Good no call. Ryder trying to take its first lead since 11-10. Can't do it. Couple of point blank shots. Sledge turns tail, drops it off for Armand. Nobody picks him up in transition, and that's an easy three for the game. And if he gets wide open looks, you can bank that one. He gets a lot of them in transition because what's your first thought? Get yourself into the paint, take away the rim. You got to be able to find Armand in transition. Miles with the nifty layup. Back to a two-point ball game. Miles, the first rider, Bronk into double figures now with 11. Sledge drops it off Ridley. Flips it up and in. And Sledge has had good energy here in this second half. Blowing by guys and putting pressure on the Bronx D. And he played just eight games last season for Fred Hoiberg at Iowa State before transferring back closer to home. He's from Spring Valley, New York. Daniel Stewart drawing the attention of the Iona defense. Back around to Miles. Long rebound. Sledge takes it away from Lowry. Oh, nice pass. 
Lindsay knocked it out of bounds. He was the last to touch it. Now he's being warned for doing a little too much jawing to the officials, and that continues here, the conversation. Well, here's this nice bounce pass. Good pick and roll. Unable to convert, but not uh, because of the terrific pass by Momo Jones. So good off the high ball screen because what? He can step behind it, knock down a three. He can be beat you off that screen and score it at the rim or pass it. Jones, no. Fortunate with the rebound as Daniel Stewart takes a break. Sean Valentine, the 6'7 freshman from Sicklerville, New Jersey, back on the floor. Ten on the shot clock. Miles back to Thompson. Now five to shoot. Valentine's got to get rid of it. But one of the guards put it up. Thompson does just that. And Ridley fouled him. Well, Jonathan Thompson bench was yelling at him, go ahead and shoot it because the shot clock was winding down. Not only does he knock down this three at the shot clock buzzer, but he gets fouled as well. So a chance for a rare four-point play that would tie the ball game at 52. And the captain of the Ryder Bronx from Orlando, Florida does just that. He's now got 13 points and we're deadlocked at 52 apiece. These two teams deadlocked in the standings in the MAC as well at 8 and 5. They're tied for third along with Canisius. Just a game back of Loyola in second and two games back of the front running Niagara Purple Eagle. Wow, that's a tough one. He's had a couple open looks. That was a step back with a guy in his face. Miles was right there, and uh, that was, what, a 25-footer yeah. for Armand. He's now got 22 points, and I would say that uh, little mini slump he had coming into the game is a distant memory right now. A couple of games ago, he had an arm injury, and Tim Kluge thought that that bothered him a little bit, almost like a dead arm. Well, that arm looks live now. Under 10 to shoot again. Fortunat sets the screen and digs Moikobu is called for the foul. Now Sean Armand, who played at Onassis High School in Manhattan, has really started to heat up here in the second half. The deep Longtime producer here on this package, Steve Fennig, is even more so with the Cleveland Browns. Well, yeah, I mean, if you can be a Cleveland Browns fan, you know. Clearly, the, there's something lacking there. Yeah, as a, as a Steeler fan, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that happens. 55-52, Iona with a three-point lead over the Vikings fans team. The Ryder Bronx is real team, not his imagined team. Nerdine Lindsay blocked by Moy Kobu, and we've got a personal foul that will send the former St. John's Red Storm to the foul line. And I like the energy and stick to from Lindsay on that play. He drives it hard, good ball fake to get the defender in the air and then found the contact. And so the Philadelphia Catholic League scoring champion at the line. He scored 35 points per game as a high school junior at Overbrook. And uh, he is capable of putting the ball in the hole. Yeah, and he was a prolific scorer in junior college, he averaged nearly 23 points per game, sixth best in the country as far as JUCO players are concerned. And that was one of the reasons why St. John's was really excited when they got him to commit. And this is two opportunities there from the line. Yeah, he's the fifth leading scorer in the history of Philadelphia high school basketball without having played a senior season. And he's, uh, you know, <laughs> he's out of the same high school as Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt was a pretty good scorer, and uh, Nuri Lindsay was every bit the scorer as well in high school. Well, he gets taken to the bucket by Momo Jones, and the offensive foul called against the Gales guard. Uh, he puts so much pressure on the defense, and uh, he's going to keep coming at you. You see, tough defense gets by Miles, but that's great defensive rotation by Lindsay. So he may have missed the two foul shots, but you got to like that he didn't get his head down and came and made a play on the defensive end. So Ryder down by three with the basketball. Miles Thompson 
Lindsay around the perimeter. Valentine back in the ball game with Fortunat inside. Well, let's see if they can probe this zone. Miles guarded by Armand. Five to shoot. Lindsay fouled by Ridley with only two on the shot clock. And that just kills you. I mean, Ridley doing a good job trying to stay with him, but the last thing you want to do when you've got Ryder on the run there with just two seconds on the shot clock is come up with a bump. So after having picked up his third foul, Ridley will head to the bench. Lowry comes back in for Tim Kluse. Rob in the second half, both teams lighting it up from beyond the three-point line. The Bronx are four of five. The Gales are three of four. Thompson fouled by Sledge. And he'll have a chance to retie the game from the foul line. And again, I don't know why he doesn't get talked about more by guys throughout this league. Because all he does is he runs his team. He's one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. And right now having a terrific offensive game. Got that terrific size for a guard. He's not your prototypical point guard, but he certainly has made himself into a solid, solid point. 16 points now for the senior from Orlando out of Jones High School down in Central Florida. Midpoint of the second half. We're tied again, 55 apiece. And the Bronx show a little half-court trap. Sledge with the rare three-point shot. A risk-reward. You try to figure out if you can change tempo. Maybe come up with a turnover, but instead an open look from three. Rather Momo, I should say. And that was a quick three there by Valentine. I don't think that uh, his coach would love that one, by the way. Got to find a better shot selection than that. Here's Jones again. Valentine with the rebound. Lindsay tries to drop it off, but had it taken away by Lowry. And here comes Jones with Sledge. It's Momo Jones for two more. And he just absolutely took off, searching for contact. Forced the defender to get out of his way. So the nation's number one teammate combo. Jones and Armand both have 22 points. And Iona is back. spotlight late in the season to not just be on the Power Six conferences, but to be on the mid-majors as well. And there's a lot of mid-major teams that have earned at-large bids because of their wins in bracket busters. These Iona Gales got a good win against Nevada in the game that you and I had last year that helped their RPI and kept their computer profile good enough to get the Gales that at-large bid. Put back by Thompson. 60-57. And since the announcement of that game against Indiana State, Iona has lost three in a row, so some of the luster has fallen from that matchup, but Indiana State's been doing its part. The Sycamores have been on fire. They have beaten ranked teams in their conference, in the Missouri Valley Conference, Wichita State and Creighton in recent days. And Indiana State is the last team to beat the Miami Hurricanes back on Christmas Day, so... Uh, these Iona Gales are certainly going to have their hands full on the 23rd out in Terre Haute, Indiana. Yeah, and the Sycamores, as you said, with some real quality wins. And that win against Miami is going to go a long way because the Hurricanes going to be in the top five in the country next week. They absolutely manhandled North Carolina for the second time this season earlier today. Knocked down 15 threes in that game. And they were so good, they got Dwayne Wade and LeBron James to stand up, giving them a standing ovation a couple of times. Third sellout in the last four games. And Jim Laranega, one of those guys whose career was really helped by the bracket buster. Remember, they had a good win going back to where they got the at-large bid to get into the NCAA tournament. Made pretty good on it with the decent run to the <laughs> Final Four. And, you know, Jim Laranega was always a terrific coach. Now he's got uh, the ability to do it on a bigger stage. And, boy, he's got the Hurricanes playing great. Yeah, the, uh, the Canes are doing something that uh, not many ACC teams have done. Stay undefeated into February. Usually it's uh, Duke of Carolina getting that done. Yeah, but it's, it's the Canes who are, who are absolutely doing it. And like you say, they're going to wind up 
as a number one seed if they keep going. Sean Armand is the injured player on the floor as play is stopped. Grabbing his knee or shin as Thompson again continues his fine play, knocking down the three. And hopefully Armand's all right. Jones and Armand both with 22 points to lead the way, but Ryder hanging with them. Jonathan Thompson has 23 points now to lead all scores, closing in on his career high of 26. Momo Jones on Stewart, and he's going to go back to the free throw line for a chance for three. When he turns that corner, he just absolutely explodes and launches into the defender. See right here on the exchange, turns it, and he is just putting his head down and putting the pressure on the defense. He picked up the one charge, but he's not going to worry about not attacking a rim. Tim Kloos was telling me before the ball game, Rob, about an interesting exercise. You may have heard coaches do this before, but he says about once every year, he likes to sit down his entire team and have each of them determine how they would like the minutes to be distributed. So he gives each player a list of the roster and says, we had one game to play. Put down how many minutes you think each person should play. Miles fouled on the alley -oop. Maybe we have to go back to that slam of the game, yeah, by the way. I have another Pepsi Max yeah. slam. That was pretty nice. That was. Nice execution in the half court. Perfectly thrown ball on the alley-oop. And Miles goes and gets it. The length of their backcourt, not only does it uh, pay off on the defensive end, but pays off on that alley-oop as well. So anyhow, before he so rudely interrupted me with that alley-oop slam... <laughs> having your players fill out the, the roster about how you want the minutes to be distributed, I find to be a fascinating... Again, Lowry interrupted me with a terrific move. <laughs> chance for his own three-point play. But what do you finish, think about an exercise like thought. that? You can really read into what players think. You know, say, for instance, David Lowry here, you ask him, okay, you're averaging about 28 minutes per game, say, and he puts down that he thinks he should only be playing 20. You read into a certain level of confidence. I just thought it was an interesting way to, yeah. to dissect the minds of your kids, perhaps. And probably again. Trying to figure out a couple of things, see where they think they're at and see where they think their teammates are at. You know, sometimes coaches look at things differently than the guys that are on the floor playing with these guys every day. Alford back in, had six big points in the first half. Misfires here, Zed Sadler with the basketball. You mentioned Ryder had only one offensive rebound in that entire first half. And another opportunity for a, an old-fashioned three-point play. All right, talk about the scoring duo in the backcourt for Iona. Well, the scoring duo in the backcourt for Ryder trying to match him here today. Miles again turns the corner, and he's got the length to be able to finish. Ridley picking up the fourth foul. Once again, trying to challenge defensively. And extending the possession with their third offensive rebound of the second half. Miles shot just as the whistle was being blown, whether they're going to allow Trey Bowman to be brought into the game or not, and whether they're going to allow Miles the free throw. They say it's good, and that's going to get the Gales bench up. Well, again, the horn sounded. The ball was already in the shooter's hands, so the horn shouldn't have sounded. That's a mistake at the scorer's table. And because of it, He's not there in time. Now we're going to redo. Clearly the ball was in Miles' hands as we were trying to listen through. He knocked down that one. Doesn't matter. He knocks this one down too. Let's just pretend that whole thing didn't happen. Yeah. All's well that ends well. Yeah, but it only ends well if you step back up and make it for the second time. Gale's trying to get the sub in there to protect Ridley with those four fouls. Just got to the scorer's table late. 16 points for Miles, 23 for Thompson. Back to a one-point game, six minutes remaining. Jones to the left hand, high off the window for two more. 
And that was with more contact than we've seen a couple of times when the whistle blew. They realized on the switch that he had Stewart, so he stood him up and went right by him. 27 points now for Jones. Came in averaging 22 and a half per game, third best in the country. Miles a tough shot, Jones the rebound. And one of the few times that Stewart, when he had the ball in his hands, didn't corral it. Lowry has it taken away by Sadler. It's Bronx possession. Now there you see the uh, statistical evidence that uh, Jones and Armand are indeed the highest scoring teammates in the country. Nice move to the bucket. Thompson now with 25 points. And because of his scoring in miles, those two guys have combined for 41 points. So together, how about 90 points from the two backcourt duos matching head-to-head -head here tonight. Here is Armand. Kicks to the corner for Bowman. That's a great play by Son Armand and Doug, a play that he was unable to make a year ago. And that is why it is so important that you get yourself into the gym and you work on his game. He has, he's seeing the rewards of it, and his team's seeing the rewards of it. Second three-pointer by Bowman. There's the former Penn State Nittany Lion. And the Gales get it back off the turnover, 71-67. Iona led by seven at the break. A quick flurry of three three-pointers by Ryder to start the second half. Helped the Bronx take the lead, and they've been seesawing back and forth ever since. They're going to run that high ball screen to death with the ball in Momo Jones's hand. Nice job defensively by Thompson. Bowman off the mark. Under four minutes left in regulation. Thompson. Alford after it, but it's Armand who comes away with the basketball. Tavon Sledge had a steam to Bowman. Back out to Jones. Quick pass to Armand. He drives around Miles. Puts it up. Two more for the junior. And he has a tremendous career accomplishment that is now 1,000 career points a great ball movement Ryder did a good job closing out by but the fourth time you close out you're able to beat him off the bounce personal foul called against Tavon Sledge and the historic bucket by Sean Armand has extended the Iona lead back up to six Armand with 24 points so far tonight Anaconda Sports. One thousand point score for his career. At the line, uh, Jonathan Thompson working on a career high. He's got twenty-five points. Misses the first on what was called a shooting foul against Tavon Sledge. But uh, Thompson's been on a pretty good roll, putting the ball in the basket lately, Rob. Yeah, highly efficient tonight as well. Nine of twelve from the floor. But you're right. He matched a career high two games ago in a win against Maris with twenty-three. And he continues to play with a lot more confidence, and you look at his run, double figures each of the last four games. And as we said, one of the more underrated players in the match. And a scoring average now up over 12 per game for the 6'4 senior from Orlando. Jones, good body control. Yeah, he just floats through the lane. That upper body strength allows him to finish so many of those drives. 29 points for the senior from Harlem.
75-68 Iona. And he's been on a roll himself. 20 or more now, seven out of the last eight games. And uh, boy, can he score the basketball, right? Some guys can shoot it. Some guys that can drive it. He can do both, and when you do both of those, you're the definition of a score. Yeah, he's the uh, the quintessential combo type guy because he yep. can run the team as well. Well, he's not the passer that uh, Scott Machado was a year ago, but he's certainly a better scorer than Machado was. But Jones has fit in seamlessly in his two years playing whatever role asked of him from Coach Tim Clouse. Danny Stewart misses the front end, so the Bronx has gone a little bit cold here at the free throw line. So now here's the key for Iona. They've been in this position a lot lately when they look like they have a game in hand and they haven't been able to finish things off. Can the Gales finish this one off and get off this three-game losing streak? Bowman out. Stewart misses them both. He's a good foul shooter, but not on that trip. Lowry with the rebound. Those are two huge misses with two and a half minutes remaining. Here's Jones coming off a 37-point performance his last time out. Actually, that was coming off the bench. Timeout from the Iona bench. Tim Clus wants to talk it over with 14 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Mac fans, the Mac is on Facebook. Make sure to like the Mac today. There is Momo, the uh, proud father of Jace Denham Jones, eight months old. Shot clock under 10. Here goes Jones driving on Stewart. Again, frees himself a little opening, but he couldn't convert that time. Sadler grabs the rebound, and he sheds defenders with just a little slight bump. Stewart forcing his way to the bucket up and over Ridley, but he couldn't finish. Uh, he's got to be able to finish those. Can't get a better shot than that. Who said in the first game he absolutely dominated inside in the second half as the Bronx were able to go on a late run, 8-2, to two, to finish the ball game in the last three minutes to win it. One forty on the clock. Sledge and Jones in the backcourt with Bowman and Armand, a four-guard look along with Ridley who sets the screen. Armand denied. Terrific left-handed block by Anthony Miles. And here comes Thompson. Right to the bucket. Tried to drop it off and gives it away. And credit Armand for making the trip defensively up the floor. Sledge so slow to get up after being fouled. There's the block defensively. You thought that Ryder was going to be able to convert at the other end. Tell you what, I think Thompson would have been better off scoring that one. Instead of trying to make the pass, so they've had two, each of the last two possessions, they've been point blank at the rim and come up empty. It's on the replay, Sledge rolled his ankle a bit, but he stays in the game and plays on. And Sadler nearly came up with that steal, needed to make that one. Now Sadler trying to guard Jones with just over a minute on the clock. Good defense by Stewart to knock it away from Jones, and Sledge was the last to touch. And if you're Iona, here's where now all of a sudden, to the thoughts of the last couple of games where you've given one away, not just one, but two. The basketball trying to get away from the defender, but the reach around and poke around. I'm not sure if Tim saw it deflected. Maybe he thought that it was a pass attempt, but I agree with you. Miles for three. He's got it. It's a four-point ball game. Well, deja vu. Chance. They got to come up with something here defensively. They've got to come on up with the steal. Pressure broken. Ball in the hands of Jones. And he's going to pull it back out. And he's going to hold it. Smart play. You know, sometimes you want to give it up to let the clock go. I think that's a smart play. 
Keep the ball in Momo Jones' hands. 88% from the foul line. I'll take my chances with Momo going to the line. Jones has 29 points. You see the sigh of relief there from Tim Clutes. Yeah. That's what happens. You lose a couple of close ball games, boy. You're just hanging in there trying to figure out a way to get a win. Make sure to follow the latest Mac happenings on the Mac Twitter page at twitter.com slash Mac Sports. So Momo now back-to-back 30-point -back games and fourth time this season he's gone over that mark. But I like the way that he just kept the basketball in his hands. He said, you know what? I'm going to line. I'm not taking a chance of turning the basketball over to somebody else, have him miss a foul shot. I'm going to finish this one off myself. 31 now for Jones. His season high was 40 against Quinnipiac back in November. Remember, he went for 43 last February against Canisius. That three way off the mark for Miles. And the possession arrow belongs to Ryder. Miss three, you got to be able to corral the rebound. That's how they lost the game up in Niagara. The Purple Eagles missed three threes, but were able to get offense rebounds on all of those possessions on the same last 17-second possession of that ball game until Wanye Green finally knocked a three down on their fourth attempt to force the overtime. You force the miss, you got to finish the possession. Stewart hands it back off to Thompson. Trying to add to his career high, can't do it. Again, another offensive rebound chance for Ryder, and Jones smartly calls timeout. A great hustle to get to the floor and get it. Wasn't a clean defense, a rebound. Read books right before the game. He uh, gets himself into a good frame of mind, and he certainly must have been reading a good book before tonight's ball game because it's been a very efficient effort for Momo Jones. 10 of 19 from the floor. Hasn't done well from beyond the three-point line. Only one out of five, but uh, he's got himself to the line. 10 of 11. Six rebounds, three assists, an all-around effort for Jones. And just like he did last possession, gets the ball against the full-court pressure, keeps it himself. Not going to take any chances. Not going to take any chances of turning it over. He's 10 of 11 from the line. Said came in with more made foul shots than any player in the country. 151 coming in. Look at 162 on the season so far. You said you saw Tim Clues uh, exhale a little bit. Well, he I'm not so sure he's <laughs> fully exhaled just not yet. Not completely, but uh, <laughs> I, that showed the confidence because it was Momo going to line, and I think it, you know, that's the confidence he's got in Momo. One out of two from the line. 15 seconds left in regulation. Ryder down by seven. Thompson gives to their three-point specialist, Pereira. Taking a lot of time to get the shot off. Ridley got a piece of it. And the Bronx will keep possession underneath their, their own basket with 4.6 on the clock. Thompson trying to find Pereira. Gets it to him. Quick catch and release. It's an air ball. And Bowman's rebound will end it. Well, when you're in the midst of a three-game losing streak,